you so much for coming on. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you and speaking with you for, for quite some time right now. Um, you know, so uh, my name is Wasam Sumble for everybody that's, uh, that's joining in for the first time. I'm CEO and founder of Dell Help, uh, where we integrate across multiple wearables, connected devices, um, and make it easier to collect better data outcomes directly from patients. Um, on to today's, uh, today's podcast, we're having uh, Neil Friedman from Circle Plus. Um, I've had the pleasure of, of working and knowing Neil for, for quite some time. And, um, you know, I brought him on and would love to, Neil, um, maybe introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about kind of your, uh, your background and uh, what brought you into this. Okay, sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Nice to see you, Wes. Um, our, our corporate name is Body Metrics. Our product name is Circle for everybody's understanding. And we're very much known by, by the Circle name more than our corporate name. Uh, but Body Metrics for everybody's knowledge is a 10 year old company. And uh, I'm proud to say over the 10 year period, we've had some of the best devices that have been available that could be used potentially in remote patient monitoring over that 10 year period. Um, about five years ago, I uh, met a gentleman and today we have what is known as the Circle Plus Ring, which is a ring that I'm showing you that is really not like a ring. It's more like a nut, that's the way I describe it. And if I may show you, it expands and contracts, okay? And that's very, very important, and I'll explain why. Uh, on August the 29th, 2023, we got a, a landmark clearance from the FDA for the Circle Ring, and the particular ring that was approved is the Circle Pro. In that clearance, the FDA uh, did several things. One, they uh, recognized our patent and our form factor, the uniqueness of our form factor. And they stated because of our ability to expand as contract, as I tried showing here on this podcast, we end up stabilizing the sensor and therefore creating medical metrics. That should be very, very important to everybody on this podcast because it is the first time that the FDA has created a definition for medical metrics, and that is the stabilization of sensors. And I bring that quickly to everybody's point because we, in body metrics, we separate the wearable world. I don't like the word wearable. I prefer it to be called sensors as the FDA is calling it, but there are what we call the healthy devices, which are like the Apple Watch, the Fitbit Watch, the Aura Ring, you know, which are, there's nothing wrong with those devices and I'm not knocking them, but they're, they're from what we call the healthy world. And the people that purchase those uh, devices uh, mostly are really concerned with seeing metrics about themselves, really not being concerned about medical accuracy and want to see an interactive app. We are on the other side of the ledger and we are what we call a healthy company, health company. And when we define health, it's medical metrics, i.e., as I just explained, that the FDA, in their clearance, has said and stated that we are the, frankly, are the only wearable slash sensor that today provides medical metrics. And the additional thing, which is so important to everybody on this call, is the pigmentation issue. The pigmentation problem in oximetry has been known for over 40 years and basically went to sleep prior to COVID and arose again to, the, to everybody during COVID because pigmentation that I'm referring to is blood oxygen. And blood oxygen is the key metric that was used for monitoring people during COVID. And what was found, which was known, which was covered, was that blood oximeters have a problem with people of color. When I speak of color, I speak of from Chinese to black, approximately 40% of our you know, population of the United States. During the period of COVID, it's estimated that over half a million people died due to pigmentation problems. Uh, as a matter of fact, 
John Hopkins did the largest pulmonary study, pulmonary history, which was finalized on May 31st, 2022, where they took 7,000 patients and used ABG gases, which is a very painful, tough and litigious thing to do in 18 hospitals over 12 months and found that people of color were misdiagnosed for COVID. So in following up, just to really accelerate the process here, there were a lot of hearings at the FDA. The FDA was called on the mat about it. And actually five months ago, our attorney generals of our United States wrote a letter to the US healthcare system and to the FDA, putting them on warning that they are knowledgeable about the pigmentation issue. And that additionally, besides that, they are violating HHS's anti-discriminatory laws and that there would be lawsuits coming down the pipe. Well, two days after they wrote the letter, the first lawsuit came about. And frankly, you can create an analogy between the opioid crisis and the pigmentation issue, and it will cascade down to our insurers, to our providers, to our clinical research organizations, to the dashboards, and to the retailers of America who have sold devices knowingly knowing that there's a problem. Last point of the F, now hard way to bring you all the way back to the FDA clearance that we had, but the last point of the FDA clearance was, one, they stated that we had the form factor, two, that we stabilized the, met, the, the ring on the finger so we were capable of getting medical metrics. And lastly, they spoke about how our senses are on the belly of the hand or the non-pigmented side of the hand via this being the pigmented side. And because of that, we are capable of getting uh, numbers on people of all colors. So uh, this has really been one of our uh, passions to get this message across, to get this uh, taken care of so that all people in this country and in the world get equal health care. Neil, how long have you been after this for? After the pigmentation issue? Pigmentation issue. Well, it's uh, frankly, um, in uh, December, in January of 20, February, I'm sorry, forgive me. In February of 2021, uh, we went to the FDA, myself, my partner, and our chief scientific advisor, who is Dr. Mayo Krieger, who's out of Yale University and one of the pioneers of sleep medicine and also is the first man to actually diagnose sleep apnea. Uh, we went to the FDA knowing that our device pre-clearance uh, pre was a device that potentially could help everybody, and the FDA turned us down. It's been exciting. Um, um, let's talk a little bit more about compliance, right? So sure. Um, you know, one of the things that we focus on quite a bit and it's kind of, you know, why we uh, we partner with organizations like yours is there's like wear compliance, there's operational issues, right? So as you bring these different wearable devices into different studies and, yes. and et cetera, you want to give researchers a glimpse of is the device on or not? Is the battery on or not? Um, are people even wearing the device or not? Um, how has this been been for you guys? You know, what what do you see as kind of uh, some of the core issues that you know that can truly be resolved by you know integration of of both organizations like this? Okay, well, I think the first thing, unfortunately, in today's world, the number one security, the number one question is cybersecurity. Okay, uh, I think that's really more important than what the device is and what the device does, unfortunately, in today's world. So I'm proud to say, for example, uh, we, we signed a national contract with the Kaiser Permanente Corporation, and it took us uh, four years to get to that contract, three years of clinical work, and the last year was security work, right? And so we passed their security, which took us a year long period. Additionally, we are used today in the Veterans Administration um, in several different areas, and we are um, integrated into what is known as a FedRAMP system. So again, we had to go through cybersecurity clearance, 
And lastly, um, in our FDA clearance, uh, it was the period of heightened concern of cybersecurity and where a normal clearance for our device would take, let's say eight to 10 months, it took 19 months. And that was because this, the FDA became concerned about cybersecurity. And we actually were like the pinata. We were the, one of the first devices that they actually tackled cybersecurity with. So the most important thing, if I'm a clinician or an insurer or whoever is you know, gonna use this device is that we can assure you that we are cyber security. Okay, if I could say it to you that way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which is to me is the single biggest concern uh, as is our dashboard, which if you wanted to use it or your dashboard or any dashboard, the most important thing is that you have cyber security under control. What are some of the core diseases that you see your device works for? Okay, um, that's a great question. Okay, um, you know, people automatically when they see blood oxygen or heart rate, they immediately think of sleep and they should think of sleep, but it goes far outside the world of sleep. It's frankly, it's all pulmonary and cardiovascular diseases essentially, because um, the reality is when you take that air in, right, it's affecting your lungs and your lungs are, could be OSA, which of course is in the world of sleep, but it also encompasses uh, COPD, asthma, pulmonary fibrosis, cystic fibrosis. Uh, it also interrelates to your heart, right? And needless to say, uh, your heart needs to receive the oxygen to continue to allow it to keep pumping. Mm -hmm. So um, we're very much involved there. Another thing that is on the horizon for us, which I'm very, very excited about, uh, and which, of course, Delve will have also, will be will be we will call the Circle VS, but it's actually our Circle Pro ring, which is our FDA approved ring, and and there's only two devices like this that are approved today by the FDA. It's an FDA approved uh, watch that actually has a bladder in it, and um, we have. Uh, perfected uh, the ability to do continuous blood oxygen and continuous blood pressure. And uh, we will be shipping that into clinical trials uh, this July. And the first trial is a terrific thing that I think all your listeners will be happy that we're working on. And we will have these, our ring and blood pressure device on black maternal women which will be terrific because this is an area of healthcare and equity as, as is the pigmentation issue. And uh, we will be providing to these women who have really unfortunately and terribly probably have never had any metrics on them, metrics about their health. And uh, we think that this change is gonna be stunning as far as uh, the, uh, hopefully the successful birth of their child and the good health of their child. That's phenomenal. So you're going to have two different devices on single. How long is this trial going to go on for? Uh, this trial is going to go on for quite a long period of time because it's being put on them at you know three months. And of course, it takes nine months to deliver a child. But uh, we, 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 will, we will have very, very powerful data in the first 30 to 45 days. As a matter of fact, um, preeclampsia takes about uh, 20 weeks to be recognized, and we feel by doing continuous blood oxygen, continuous blood pressure, that we're going to be able to see it 10 weeks early and really make a change in, in the potential health of both the mom and the baby. Are you also going to keep monitoring after the women give birth as well? Yes, they, they're going to continue monitoring, yes. Uh -huh. that, is, that, is, that is the Quite goal here. Okay. Good. Yeah, so and, it's, it's very exciting. Uh, Yes, also, that, yeah, the blood right. pressure. I mean, that's that's really well, nice. Well, let me tell you what what we're doing with this, and you know, open up your audience to you and what you'll have. If I can say it to you that way, um, we we believe that um, hypertension has never been treated properly and could be treated earlier. And uh, frankly, most people are really not watched properly while they're sleeping, and so. We we've seen 
that during REM sleep, that if you get extraordinary spikes in your blood pressure, and when I'm talking spikes in blood pressure, let's say while you're sleeping, your blood pressure typically is lower than do, during the day. So let's say your blood pressure is 110 or 120 and you spike up to 180 and we get this quick sp spike uh, that it's a, a predetermination of a stroke or a heart attack. And uh, so it's really going to be a, uh, an alarm system, if I can say that to you, for all of us, and maybe some someday being used almost like a mammogram test at the age of 40, each one of us will take one and uh, be able to know if we are predisposed to those problems and be treated properly that way. So Neil, so one of the common questions I get often is, you know, when we talk about rings, the first mm -hmm. thing that comes to people's mind is aura ring. Mm -hmm. How do you differentiate yourself over the aura ring? Okay, so of course we all know the expression apples and oranges, and it's apples and oranges. Um, or it has done extremely well, and I'd, I'd like to have all their money, as we all would. Um, but they're, they're different. They're on that healthy side of the ledger, as I mentioned before. So an aura ring takes a measurement, for example, a blood oxygen measurement every 15 minutes. Okay, we take a measurement, the same measurement, one 100 hertz, which means that we are taking 100 measurements every second, okay? So I, very simply, a doctor will not diagnose off an aura ring, okay? That, that, right? Whereas a doctor can diagnose off of our ring. So again, there's nothing wrong with either ring, right? They're both terrific. You know, they serve a purpose. One, one is accuracy and the when how how often the metric is taken and one is you might say the looks of it and uh what you're achieving with your friends awesome sounds good um well neil um thank you so much this has been amazing um i love the circle i'm a fan um you know um i look forward to continued collaboration and working together and uh, thank you again for coming on. Thank you. And I wish you good health. That's the most important thing.